Hey guys, welcome to Button Mashers Mashcast. Mashcast is a podcast where we talk about Nintendo games in general and nerd culture, what have you. We appreciate you tuning in and we hope you enjoy the Mashcast. Okay, guys, March 3rd is almost here, so we have to sit down and talk about the Switch, finally. We have so many things to say, and I know all of us are really excited, but we're all kind of worried about things as well, as are most people. So, yep. how about we just start off, and we can all give our impressions of what we thought of the Switch event that happened on January 12th. So... Uh, Will, do you want to start? Yeah. Um, overall, I thought the the event was all right. I think I, along with many other people, were kind of expecting it to be a mini E3, but that's definitely not the impression I got after seeing the whole thing. Um, I think it started off pretty strong, like the event looked nice, but then it kind of had some shoddy moments through the rest of it, and it got kind of shaky. Um, so some of the hype kind of died down midway through and I was like, what am I watching? But, uh, it definitely ended strong with the, that Zelda trailer. So really, really from, as an, from an overview standpoint, that's kind of how I felt about it. A little let down. I was expecting more, but I don't know. Zelda, it's hard to say it was a bad event when you end with a Zelda trailer like that. Mm -hmm. What about you, Ryan? Well, I felt like they just... Didn't do a good job with the live presentation. They should have went with a pre-recorded route to uh, getting that information out. I also felt like it didn't uh, detail the system enough like I'm used to when it comes to, to the directs from Nintendo of America. And I was very disappointed most of the time up until the trailer for Mario Odyssey. Then the hype came back and then it ended with a bunch of hype for Zelda. So I would agree with a lot of what Will said that you know, overall, I was disappointed because that's the kind of media that I'm into. And I know they could have did a better job with what they decided to include in the event and what they should have had, but excluded. Yeah. How uh, about you, Alex? Yeah, I, I pretty much agree with a lot of what you guys are saying. I wouldn't say it's the worst event that Nintendo's had. I'm getting flashbacks of when they had Nintendo <laughs> Land and they threw yeah. confetti at the end and nobody really cared but the Wii drummer oh god yeah that was that was horrible <laughs> um, music. but yeah I mean any, ending on Zelda definitely ended it with a lot of hype but it was a lot of stuff before that like the whole translation stuff uh, I think it was the guy from Suda51 when the guy was trying oh, to translate him apparently he went off script but even still I think that's something that shouldn't have happened they should have been I don't understand why they didn't have a live translator because Bill Trennan was there. He's a really good translator. So I almost feel yeah. like he should have been, uh, you know, commentating the whole thing or not commentating, but he should have been translating the whole thing live for us. But I don't know. I mean, it's Nintendo. I don't know really what their angle on that was. The funny but, thing is, you mentioned um, doing a pre recorded thing like the direct, um, Ryan, because before this, a lot of people were saying, they should do a live show. It would be way more hype. But it seems like the mentality after ne after the show is, oh, they should have done pre-recorded. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I definitely... Uh, I saw a lot of that as well. And I think, actually, we were saying that. I think at least me and you, Will, were saying we wanted a live presentation. But I would have been fine either way. But after seeing the live presentation and... Of course, we all watch E3 every year, and sometimes Microsoft and Sony and Ubisoft and EA have really sloppy live presentations, 
So it made sense why Nintendo went with the whole pre-recorded route for all that time that they did. But the mm-hmm. thing that's weird is that the pre-recorded stuff that was at the event was not all of it was bad, but some of it was really awkward. Especially that trailer for One Two Switch, like that was horrible. I don't, I don't know if anybody <laughs> actually liked that trailer. At first, I was like, "What is even going on? What is with these guys standing, having a uh, a face off in the middle of the desert, and why is it lasting so long?" And I think that that yeah. was kind of a weak way to start off the presentation. Which also brings me to one of my bigger disappointments was it seemed like they had kind of a big focus on motion controls when they should have been focusing again on the uh, the whole portable aspect of the console because that's what makes it so unique. It's not like motion controls are a new thing. And HD rumble sounds like it might be neat. Uh, you know, there's been mixed impressions on how big of an impact it actually has. But, you know, I think they should have just shoved into people's face throughout the presentation multiple times. Like, look, you can take this console anywhere you want with you. If you want to use it as a handheld, you can. If you want to use it as a console on your TV, you can. And I don't know. I I felt like their messaging up until the presentation was really good. But then at the presentation, they kind of slipped a little bit. It wasn't bad, but they did slip a little bit. I was thinking exactly that. Like, the messaging before... To me, it was exactly what you said. Here's a console, and you can take this anywhere. Mm-hmm. And I feel like they kind of took some some steps back from that during the presentation. And I I can't even remember. I only watched the presentation once, but I don't remember them really mentioning the whole mobile aspect aspect of it at all. It was like yeah, really focused on the console and the Joy-Con. Yeah, I was like, well, where did the mobile part go? Yeah, it's weird. Like, uh, I only remember one specific part, and it was very brief. They were just talking about all the different ways you can play the Switch. They're like, you can play it on the TV. You can play it uh, in handheld mode. You can play it, you know, with the uh, you can lounge the on, grip. on the couch. Yeah, uh, you can take it to the park. You can take it in the bathtub, and it's like, you know. And actually, they didn't even say all that. Maybe it would have been good if they would have went that far and really shoved it in people's <laughs> faces. Like, you can, you know, take a take a bath while you play your switch like. Drop a yeah i understand yeah. what you guys are saying with all that but i do believe they have a lot more to cover than going over what everybody already knows about how you know you can take it with you anywhere and that is you know they left, they left out a lot of games that they should have had the trailers play during this event um so their software they had to cover and they had to cover what the joy cons can actually do because nobody ever heard uh, about this hd rumble thing but with the whole presentation and how they did it live instead of pre-recorded, they still could have did it live and then had the pre-recorded sections of their presentation, you know, somebody hits play on the, the screen and they make it huge for the whole crowd to see in the, the live environment they recorded in. You know, I think they could have done a much better job and it was just, it felt rushed to me. And yeah. the focus on motion controls, I guess they really wanted to bring back the audience that that casual audience that really liked the Wii and that, you know, these new controllers are still, it's like an upgraded Wii in a, in a way, you know, it's way better than motion plus supposedly. And I just think that they could have did a better job presenting that to an audience. If they had the IP or some kind of <laughs> game that was a bit more interesting than once you switch uh, to, uh, to show it off because they didn't yeah. really show you know, I, I guess it's something you have to experience with the whole HD Rumble thing. But the IR, IR camera, I think they could have did a better job finding a way to make that a bit more fun to, to use instead of that one game during the Nintendo Treehouse and somebody eating a bunch of sandwiches. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just sort of an example of it or something. But and yeah. I'm honestly surprised that that is not a pack-in game because I could see the appeal to a wider market. Like that game is not for us as mostly core gamers. But, you know, I could see that being fun. Like, I, I have a feeling my family would enjoy playing that, you know, like gather around and watch everyone be ridiculous. It's like charades. But, you know, you're going to ask people to drop 50 or $60 on that on top of the console itself. I'm not so sure. Why is yeah. it they couldn't have made one two switch built around Mario characters? Or some of the other well-known IP instead of having it like these generic humans on the screen doing whatever I, I feel like that really hurt the the selling point of the game in a way you know 
Yeah, actually, that's and, a good point. If they would have showed off that trailer, even if the Nintendo characters weren't really a big part of the game itself, if they would have just had like this kind of animated, funny thing where Link and Mario are playing that samurai mini game, a part yeah. of it, like that would have been funny and interesting to see. But the way that they presented in that trailer just looked really awkward, and it didn't even look like fun. It looked like, oh, these people look stupid. You know, like, I mean, I don't even understand what they are doing. So, One Two Switch looks like a Wario game to me. Like they could have branded mm-hmm. that as Wario so easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's Wario good point. They really could have. That's a that's a great point. And yeah. you know, they didn't even have to do that, but just the presentation of the game itself, how they displayed that to people for the first time. I think most people, just from what I've seen, nobody cares about the game that much, and most mm-hmm. people don't even really understand what it is and i didn't even understand what it was until i saw it during the uh treehouse the next day because i was wondering like what do you do in this game because they said you don't look at the screen you look in your the uh your opponent's eyes it's like okay but i mean you you have to look at the screen at some point right Right. especially for the march audience because i feel like the march audience are your core nintendo fans you know i didn't I didn't hear about like my grandmother going out and pre-ordering the Switch. You know, the, <laughs> the first right. people who get the Switch are going to be us, and likely not going to be playing One Two Switch. I, I think just the fact that One Two Switch isn't a packing game, I, I, it definitely hurts it a lot. I don't think there's going to be as many people that will play it just because of that. But at the same time, I'd rather them not have it a packing, so that way I'm not paying for it because True. I don't I don't really care about the game. And honestly, because it's not a packing game, I think maybe it would have been a good idea for them to switch one to switch with some other game in their lineup, maybe ARMS, because ARMS is a new IP, and if you have that at launch alongside Zelda, people are going to be like, oh, I'll get Zelda, and hey, ARMS looks kind of interesting, so I'll pick that up too. Because ARMS is a game that I myself, even though I'm not a fan of motion controls, you can play it without motion controls, mm-hmm. and it looks right. interesting. You know, it's it's given me Spl- uh, Splatoon vibes, not because of you know how it looks. It looks nothing like Splatoon, but it, it's similar to Splatoon. Where the first time I saw Splatoon, I thought it was stupid, and I was like, "Oh, this is Nintendo's new IP. This is really underwhelming." But mm-hmm. then the more I saw of it, and the more I heard about it, I'm like, "Well, you know, this sounds really unique, and maybe it maybe it would be pretty fun." So. And if ARMS was a launch game, I probably would have bought it just because there's really not a lot else at launch uh, besides Bomberman right. that I care about. But 1-2-Switch, I don't care about at all. That could be the only game in existence and I wouldn't play it. So, And I mean, that's just personal preference, of course. But yeah, I think that's just Nintendo, like uh, like Ryan says, it's just them really trying to bring back their you know casual gamer audience that they had with the Wii. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just I think they should have had, you know, either a first-party IP or a big third-party supporter bringing a big game at launch alongside Zelda for core gamers. So, yeah, the launch lineup to me is the most one of the most disappointing things about the Switch. Even though I'm super hyped for Zelda, that's going to be awesome. I wish there mm-hmm. was just one other game, like a, especially a multiplayer game. I know Bomberman is multiplayer. But if it was like Splatoon at launch, or or even Mario Kart 8 at launch, uh, if it would have had new tracks at least, um, <laughs> I would have been so down for that. But, you know, and Bomberman's great. I, I don't know why they didn't have that a part of their presentation, because as of right now, it's Switch exclusive, and there hasn't been a mainline Bomberman game in, gosh, I, I want to say like seven years maybe. So, So I don't know why they didn't you know show the support that konami's given them for their new console i Maybe think that uh, is their support <laughs> yeah i think it's a pikmin, pikmin game like pikmin 4 would have been a good launch title yeah. just like the was for the gamecube it's like they're releasing a new system it's the gamecube all over again hopefully not because that was the wii u but um what? yeah so uh will what are you most excited for for the nintendo switch um so yeah um aside from the direct or not the direct G's, the the January 12th event. Yeah, I'm still excited for the Switch. The thing I'm most excited about, I think, is the software potential. And by that, I mean that, 
you know, if this is going to be their platform moving forward, which I know they've said that the 3DS, they're going to continue to support it. They said the same thing in the past about the Game Boy Advance when the DS came out. So I don't fully buy it. If that's the case, then we could see tons of Nintendo IP on this single system. And that is super exciting to me. Just the possibility of that. Because if you if you look at the Wii U and the 3DS and you kind of weave the games in and out, you realize that there are a ton of games that came out. Now, if all of those were coming out on one system, that's an amazing system. And I, and I think if they have all of their IP being developed on, or if they have all of their developers working for one system, they can kind of dig deeper into IP that hasn't been touched in a while. <coughs> F-Zero, <coughs> Metroid. So Are you, are you okay? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just hopeful that we're going to see games that haven't seen the light of day in a while. What about Custom right. Robo? Custom yeah. Robo. <laughs> Ch- Chibi Robo. Oh, boy. Let's not talk about Chibi Robo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I agree with a lot of that. I will say, though, that even though they didn't really support the DS after the 3DS came out, they did support the GBA. Well, actually, I take that back. Third parties supported GBA a lot after the DS came out. Mm-hmm. And I think that's probably why the whole GBA slot was put into the DS, or at least the original DS. I don't think it was on the... Was it on the DS Lite, the GBA slot? I yes. Remember. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, it, was. It, was still, it was still on there then. So, yeah, they had third-party GBA support for a really long time. But, uh, I mean, that, that doesn't really matter because uh, I know we're talking about first party right now. So, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you. I, I don't really see them supporting 3DS for that much longer. I could see it being maybe a year, a year and a half. And if if all of their first-party big games start coming to the Switch, that is going to make it a very, very exciting console to, to own for Nintendo fans. So, right. I think um, this will bleed into the thing you're most excited for, but just the announcement that Fire Emblem is coming to the Switch is a pretty big deal, I think, and kind of hints towards what I'm suggesting because we haven't seen a Fire Emblem on a quote-unquote console for a long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was say, it GameCube? No, it no was, there was no, one on Wii. It was on Wii, but I think that was like... It was either seven or eight years ago that that one came out, so it's been a really oh, long right. time since Fire yeah. Emblem has been on a home console. Yeah, so, yeah, so then that's a good Fire sign. Emblem... I mean, yeah, I guess it's a good sign to your point, Will, but I feel like whenever they stop supporting the 3DS, they'll be in development for a new handheld system that's only handheld because of the Switch lasting, you know, only, what is it, two and a half to six and a half hours on the go. I think there's some gamers out there who prefer Nintendo handhelds over Nintendo consoles in general, um, and there's an audience that Nintendo might be missing out if they if they don't. I mean, what do you think? Do you think they do you think they'll uh, put out a new handheld eventually after the 3DS? I almost feel like they can't, especially in the kind of market that exists today for handhelds. It's super, it's pretty small. Um, it's yeah. actually kind of amazing how well the 3DS ended up doing in uh, the United States because mobile is everything now. You know, people don't really care much about handheld gaming. And I think the only reason why the 3DS did so good is because of the games it got, like Pokemon. And I think the game that really uh, set it off at first was Super Mario 3D Land and Mario Kart 7. Right. So, yeah, because up until then, the 3DS was doing really, really bad in sales. And then, you know, 3D Land, Mario Kart came out. And then I think it was the next year, Pokemon really showed like okay yeah there's still a market for handhelds if you have the right games on it however i don't really think or not i don't think but i don't know if at least the people here in the west are going to care so much about a new handheld just because mobiles are big and nintendo is bringing a lot of their series to mobile so i think I think the idea of having another handheld alongside the Switch is almost kind of uh, redundant in a way, because I feel like the Switch is their answer to the handheld market, mm-hmm. is saying it's a console, but you can take it with you, so if you're still into handhelds, you know, or maybe all you care about is having a handheld, you can use it that way. And mm-hmm. I think if the Switch does well enough, 
uh, we could maybe see like an upgrade uh, down the line where it increases the battery life. You know, because the 3DS had that. The original 3DS, I think people yeah, the, seem the to Switch forget Lite. this. <laughs> yeah, the the original 3DS had really bad battery life. So um, oh. I remember that was a big negative side that people always talked about with the 3DS. Uh, right. The very yeah, original right. 3DS, it was like, man, but the battery life is only like five hours. It's like, right. yeah. Now the difference is that the Switch is like it's game dependent. So if you're playing Zelda, it'll be like you yeah. know two and a half hours maybe. Mm-hmm. And you know if you're playing one two Switch, it'll probably last ten years and never die. Because so. <laughs> <laughs> you know you don't, you don't look at the screen, the screen. <laughs> exactly. So um, so uh, what would you say you're most excited for then on the on the Switch? Oh, it's definitely Fire Emblem. I mean, I'm super hyped for. Zelda and Mario Odyssey looks so good. Oh my god. But I love Fire Emblem. It's one of my top three favorite game series. So just the fact that it's going to be an HD Fire Emblem game. And I mean, Intelligent Systems, they're in their prime right now. Seriously. They're making so many good games. uh, For Fire Emblem, at least. So, oh man. I just can't wait to see more of it. So yeah, yeah, Fire Fire Emblem, for sure. Cool. What about you, Ryan? Um, Well... I just recently played a little bit of Zelda Skyward Sword and in the future I want a Zelda to where I can switch between whichever play style I want. I want to have a Zelda to where I can pull out uh, the Joy-Con and use one of them as my sword and the other one as a shield if I want to. And if my wrists get tired then I can put it back in the gamepad, or not not the gamepad, the Switch, uh, and pick up a Pro Controller and use that to play it. And I'm just excited for the potential of what Nintendo's planning to do, if they do this, with one of their main IPs that takes advantage of everything that the Switch has to offer when it comes to play styles, when it comes to the IR camera on the back of the right Joy-Con. And, you know, I, I just don't know what they're going to do. And I'm kind of surprised that they don't have some IP right now or some, some game that we're launching with the system that really takes advantage of everything in a way that makes sense and is exciting for all types of players instead of just casual players so they're gonna have a game they're gonna have a game mechanic where it says get off the couch and remove the joy con from the dock no (laughs) no no no, wouldn't that wouldn't that be nice though to have the option to choose your play style in like a new zelda or maybe metroid or or something you know because i also got tired of playing metroid prime trilogy by aiming at the screen sometimes i'd rather just use a different control method and well maybe not all the time, but do you guys know what I'm saying? Like, why is Nintendo con- continuing to keep all this stuff in there? It can't be just for their casual audience, right? It's got to uh, be. They're, look, what else. they're what they're gonna do is they're gonna make a game that requires you to own every single Nintendo Switch accessory. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean that's a good point. It's pretty expensive, but eventually, I'm sure most owners of the Switch, if they're a, you know a hardcore gamer or they have a lot of family members and they're a casual gamer they're going to have enough accessories to support different types of switch games yeah and i just that actually wonder. that actually brings me to the thing i'm most worried about worried about and that is the price of accessories i mean ever since that event and the prices came out we've basically been doing nothing but joke about how overly expensive they are yeah like if you if you do the math like oh i want a new pair of Joy-Con and a grip for a full controller set. Well, that's going to set you back a hundred and ten dollars. Yep. So that's that's a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just for a full controller, you know. I mean, and if you think about it, if you want to get if you want to get four full controllers out of it, you know, you're looking at the price of the Switch itself. You might as well just buy another Switch. You'd pay four hundred dollars, over four hundred dollars for four <laughs> more controllers. Yeah, but I mean, you take a look at what games are multiplayer and stuff, and one, two, Switch, Mario Kart—they both use just one Joy-Con for extra players. Yeah. So we'll see what games they release but, in the future where you can have two full controllers I mean, hooked up. Granted, the system does technically come with two controllers, and that's a first. Yeah. Because two, each Joy-Con is technically its own controller. And I don't think a system has come with two controllers since the original Famicom. Oh. Yep. Huh. However, you know, there are going to be 
more traditional gamers who might not want to use just one little Joy-Con by itself because right. you know some some people might have bigger hands and don't want to hold something that's so small. Even though you know most impressions that I've seen, people are saying it's a lot more comfortable than it looks. You know, yeah, I, but no, I, you won't see those people at a major gaming tournament on the little Joy-Con. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I, but yeah, I'm so mostly just, just saying like if you want to play with you know maybe you have a brother or somebody that you live with. I don't know if just sharing just a Joy-Con with them is always going to be good enough, you know? So you might yeah. have to spend that hundred dollars for another controller. Yeah. Well, or, you know, at least or, the, or, or, the Pro sorry. Controller is at least, you know, $70 instead of the 110 for another set of Joy-Cons, you know? But Yeah, but here's... Give this, trade this was the thing I was going to bring up. The, my counter to that would be, even though the Pro Controller, you know, looks good and it's probably going to be a really nice controller... There are going to be occasional games you know that they're going to make where you use the Joy-Cons and the Pro Controller right. won't be compatible. So for those mm -hmm. instances, you almost think you would be making a better investment by just buying more Joy-Cons and more grips so that way you can use that for whatever games that come out because those are going to be compatible with everything. So See, and I hope, yeah, that's actually a good point, I hope Nintendo doesn't do that. Like you know yeah. what I mean? I, I yeah, hope, I hope so. Too. I hope they're smart about how their use of their controllers, and they don't create some sort of disparity between what you can do with the Pro Controller versus what you can do with the Joy-Con. Just keep it simple. But I don't know. That's a risk because if they have motion gaming, where you're doing things independently with your left and your right hand, that immediately rules out the possibility of using the Pro Controller. So I hope they keep that kind of gimmicky stuff to a minimum honestly yeah that we have seen a good sign though because arms was a game that i for sure thought was just the motion control game but right. you can use a pro controller with it so yes that is a really good sign yeah so that is a good sign and hopefully <laughs> that is a good sign let's just keep saying that yeah that's a good sign um <laughs> <laughs> i think we said that like four times good sign is <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, so I agree with the whole, uh, price of accessories. Uh, I think we've joked about that every time, like you said, ever since that event and we heard the prices, it's always just been the joke. Um, for me, aside from the accessories, I'm kind of worried about third party support mm -hmm. and it's not because it looks bad right now. Right now it doesn't look too bad, but I almost feel like we could have another Wii U situation if the Switch doesn't take off. I do think that no matter what, uh, Nintendo's going to be getting the support of Japanese developers because I do fully believe that the Switch is going to do well in Japan. It's getting mm -hmm. Dragon Quest games on it. It's getting the brand new Dragon Quest game on it that's coming to PS4. Uh, it's that's, only a matter of time before Monster Hunter. Yeah, Monster Hunter. It, oh, man, that's going to be huge. Um, even at launch, I feel like the Switch is going to do really well in Japan. It's really just the West that I'm more concerned about. Even though I do see a lot of hype, especially for Zelda, I don't know if it's going to do that well, at least until maybe Splatoon 2 and Mario Odyssey come out. But I feel like, you know, I'm getting flashbacks of the Wii U where we would always say, oh, but when Mario Kart 8 comes out... People will buy the Wii U. Oh, well, oh, here comes Mario Maker. That's going to make the system sell. It's Smash like, Brothers. You know, oh, and yeah, Smash Brothers. It's going to be, a, and then, you know, here comes Smash Brothers 3DS, which killed all the chances of that happening. <laughs> um, which, you know, nothing against Smash 3DS, but, you know, if that game didn't exist, maybe the Wii U would have been better off. And I don't know, because Nintendo's doing this weird crap right now where. They announced Fire Emblem Warriors, and it's like, oh, yeah, it's, you know, Fire Emblem spinoff game. I can't believe Fire Emblem, this series that was almost dead, is getting a spinoff game. <laughs> and what do they do? Oh, it's coming out for new 3DS. It's like, why? You had this good Switch <laughs> exclusive. You make people buy your console. Make people buy your new system. Why are you, like, and they have plenty of games still coming out for 3DS. You know, 3DS is a great handheld. It's probably my favorite Nintendo handheld, honestly. But it needs to die someday. 
I hope it dies. And I, I know I sound like a <laughs> jerk for saying that, but I'm tired of looking down at a tiny screen. I want all of my games in HD now. I'm not a graphics whore, but I'm tired of playing stuff in 240p. I don't want Fire Emblem in standard H or standard HD. I don't want it. <laughs> I don't want it in standard definition anymore. I want to see that beautiful Fire Emblem art in HD on my TV. And if I do take it on the go, it's 720p. So I'm still playing in HD. Right. I want Switch yeah. to become what Nintendo is, at least for the next several years. You know, and if Switch for some reason ends up being this thing where you know you can't do voice chat properly and they have a lot of issues then you know revise it you know fix fix the problems i mean really that's a problem they could fix without releasing a new system you know unless unless the switch really doesn't have a microphone jack or i'm sorry a headset jack which is just gonna that's a whole nother worry but that's gonna baffle me (laughs) if you can't plug in a head headset into your switch but you know, I, I hope the Switch does really well. I just hope that they don't keep doing this weird stuff where they announce a Switch game and then say, oh, but Mario Odyssey is getting a new 3DS release too. It's like, why? <laughs> why, you guys? I mean, you guys are trying to sell this system, right? And and they did yeah. that a lot with Wii U games. And it was just, I don't know. It's just kind of weird. I think it's this weird. early kind of transition period. I mean, they don't know if the Switch is going to do well yet. So they're not hedging all of their bets on it. So they're doing some low risk or some risk maintenance where they uh, risk mitigation where they put it on the 3DS as well just in case the Switch hasn't sold you know they can still get those software sales for Fire Emblem Warriors I think if the Switch does well in this first year kind of gain some momentum we're going to stop seeing that they're just mm-hmm. going to kind of go pedal to the metal on the Switch I hope so I really do hope Let's so alright Ryan Give us your most worried about. Well, I mean, earlier I said I was most excited for the potential of the Switch to combine everything it can do into one game, give you options and all that. But I'm also most worried about it because I'm not sure Nintendo is really going to take advantage of that. Um, <laughs> they uh, they got to know what they're doing. If they're going to release the system with all this stuff, then I think that they should take advantage of it. And I'm worried about the chance that they might not. But I'm also worried about what was already mentioned about the headphone jack. Uh, yep. in a controller uh, in the Switch console. I mean, I'm hoping, because I have like an extension cord with my wired headphones, that I can mm-hmm. just plug it right into the top of the Switch console while it's docked and use that to hook up to the audio that's coming out of my, my TV or whatever. Isn't the um, headphone on the bottom, though? No, it's at the top. Oh, it um, is? Yeah, top right, next to the fan. But uh, I mean, the headphone cord is going to be hanging over your screen while you're playing? I guess uh, you'd you have just to push have... it behind it. If you're like, you know, a hand handheld or tabletop mode um if your wire's long enough but you know i i, I saw the uh, controllers the pro controller the the charging grip the regular grip but i don't see any headphone jack on those and or even a, guess, heads, a headset jack so i, I guess your shocking. only hope for uh having headphones while in console mode is bluetooth so do we know it has bluetooth uh features on the switch it has um I saw some Reddit posts talking about Bluetooth four dot something. Don't quote okay. me on that, I'm not sure, but that is oh, least, we'll that's what I'm hoping. Because if I can get some nice um wireless Bluetooth headphones, then I would do that because I really don't want to run a headphone cable across my living room and up to the sofa where I'm sitting. <laughs> that yeah, would just I mean, be that defeats the whole purpose of things being wireless. Right. So, yeah, I'm worried about that, and I'm worried that the new Mario game won't really take much advantage of the system's new features. If it doesn't, I'm still gonna love it. But I don't. You know, it's just opportunities that Nintendo has to to uh, take advantage of what it can do, and and really show maybe why show their audience why they added these features, why they added HD Rumble and and kept all these old features in, in their new system. See, I think of HD Rumble not as like a big feature, but more of kind of like a bell and whistle, like the icing on the cake. You yeah, know what I, I mean? See. Yeah, I yeah. kind of. That's what I see it as too. It's definitely not so, something I'm like, oh my gosh, Nintendo is revolutionizing and yeah, it's, it's going to change one. Mario, right? Yeah, but, but we also heard somewhere. I think I was talking to Alex about it before, in the potential for the Joy Cons to become VR controllers, and. 
you know, I, I think maybe Nintendo has something else in mind because they say that, you know, Zelda doesn't really lend itself well to VR and other games probably don't, too, like Mario. Um, so maybe they have some other reasons to, to put these features in their new system. And I want to know what, it, what are what are the reasons. But if it's just for bells and whistles, just dance. Stuff, it's just, yeah, that's the sound. <laughs> it's for just dance. <laughs> I want it to be, you know, essential for these new, like the regular IP entries, but I guess it's just hopeful, uh, uh, wishful thinking for me. Mm. So, Actually, it would be pretty cool for Splatoon, like if you shot with the right trigger, you could feel it going from the bottom of the Joy-Con up to the top as it shoots out. That'd be pretty cool. Or like you could feel how much ink is in your can, like it oh. rumbles. Oh, oh man, that would actually be really nice. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. I mean, but that's not like a, uh, it's not a game changer, but it's more of like a, just a little nice thing to kind of increase the immersion or something like that, you know? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like it's not huge, but it's just like a, yeah. a nice little it, thing, you know? I mean, it's like a wow factor, you know, you could show your friends. It would be impressive. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. What if you could aim Ball your, count. your, uh, <laughs> what is that? Splatter shot with like the IR camera on the bottom of your right joy why are you suggesting motion control please stop (laughs) yeah please that's the thing that was one of my biggest worries oh Mm. i just want standard controls for almost every game that they make ryan i think the game for you is ball count (laughs) it takes full advantage of the switch's features (laughs) well yeah i guess maybe in the future maybe nintendo's preparing the switch to, to be able to play wii virtual console games even though that's that's but I don't know. It doesn't have a pointer. Like it would need a sensor bar. Hmm. But then people were saying a long time ago, rumored that uh, the touch screen would somehow be able to tell, you know, if the Joy Con's pointing at it, and I don't, know, I don't know how that would work. You know, that's like, what do you do with the touch screen when it's sitting in the dock? <laughs> Nothing. There's so many unanswered questions. Nothing. It doesn't do anything when it's in docked. Yeah. So why did they add a touch screen to the system? For the UI, I guess. <laughs> for the UI, I mean, the, the thing is, the, the touch screen's weird because um, most, so many, most people, um, when they're using handheld devices now, expect things to be a touch screen. So if it didn't have a touch screen, it would be weird. Mm-hmm. It has a touch screen, and you're like, why does this have a touch screen? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so no matter what, it's like, why does the, I don't, I don't know. Either way, it would be kind of weird. I just yeah. hope that Nintendo has a few things under their sleeve that um, are going to really excite us and maybe make a bit more sense to some of the features that the Switch has, uh, you know, because I don't fully understand some of their, their decisions right now. <laughs> yeah. Also, I will say, uh, I just remembered this. There was a video that I saw that was showing somebody using the Switch touchscreen, and they were actually playing a game. I want to say it was Skylanders, but I actually have no clue. I didn't really yeah, recognize yeah, it what it was. Yeah, and they were operating through the menus using the touchscreen. So at least we know that it's not just exclusive to navigating the UI. It's going to be used for probably, you know, getting through menus quicker, you know? It's easy to just tap on something on the screen sometimes, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So, I'm yeah, used but, to maneuvering uh, Pokemon and stuff and Pokemon Go on my phone. You know, I, I guess it's just um, a feature that people are used to. Yeah. Oh, man. So... I have a question. Would you guys have pre-ordered the Nintendo Switch? Because I know you did. Would you have pre-ordered it if Zelda was not a launch title? No. Why not? (gasps) It's the same reason that I didn't pre-order or buy the 3DS until it had better games. Because the launch games, aside from Zelda, really aren't that great. Just in my own personal opinion. I know some people... I know there has to be some people out there who want one to switch. I know there are hardcore Bomberman fans that would buy it just for that game. And I I'm looking forward to Bomberman. You know, it's it's cool that they're making a new one. But it's not like you know, it's not this huge game that I'm gonna be playing for hundreds of hours or anything. Mm-hmm. You know, it might be like I don't know, maybe like twenty, thirty hours is probably what I'll put into it period so you know it's a smaller game so zelda is a game that i can spend time on you know for for months probably years and keep coming back to it you know i i still play bloodborne every now and then that's a game that came out uh i think about two years ago now so 
You know, there are some games that just have longer lifespans for me. And Zelda is one of those games, especially Breath of the Wild. It, it's massive. It has a lot of stuff to do in it. And aside from that, it's like I don't I don't care about once you switch. I, you know, nothing against indie games, but all the indie games that launch, you know, that's... It's, it's like fluff almost, you know, like if you want those games, that's good. But I don't know many people that would buy a new console just to play an indie game. You know, you need something big there at launch. Mm-hmm. And if Zelda wasn't there, if Zelda wasn't there, they would have had to have something else big at launch. But if there wasn't, then there's no way I would have bought it at launch. There's no way at all. Well, I definitely would have because... I don't want to see myself getting into a situation where I don't have the system and it's like the Wii. Like when that came out, how hard it was to find one of those. When the Wii U came out, it was very hard to find one of those. And, you know, they just released a trailer for Mario Odyssey um, before this thing became pre-orderable. And uh, I just, I was really excited for that. And, you know, I don't want to be one of those people that can't find one whenever that game comes out. And I have a history with, with Nintendo when it comes to pre-ordering their game systems. And there's a certain feeling I get. It's like Christmas, you know, every day that some new Nintendo news comes out or they have an event or system releases. So, you know, there's, there's a factor in there that's, you know, I, I kind of ignore the games and I just want to experience the hype whenever Nintendo releases a system. So, yeah, I still would have pre-ordered it because... Eventually, I knew I would have to get it, and it might be hard to find. I don't know, because <laughs> Nintendo can't really stock very well. They're <laughs> infamous when it comes to that. Yeah, that's true. What about, what about um, you, well? Yeah, I'm with you, Alex. I probably would not have pre-ordered. <clears throat> and the way I think of it is like uh, a barbecue restaurant. You know, if uh, if I'm going to go to my favorite barbecue restaurant, I'm going there for the juicy fall off the bone ribs. I'm not going there for the side of beans and the side of mac and cheese. And that's what those one to switch and snipper clips are. Those are the side dishes. I'm not going to call and I'm not going to call and make a reservation. Oh uh, yes. Uh, me and my wife would like to uh, <laughs> have a reservation for two and make sure you have beans and French fries, <laughs> you know? So, Zelda is the fall off the bone ribs. I pre-ordered it pretty much exclusively for that game. But now that I have that and the Switch, I'll be likely to pick up kind of a filler title, probably Snipper Clips, honestly. So without it, it, I would be in the situation kind of um, that I was in with the Wii U. I, I still remember when I bought that system on launch, I came home, I plugged it in, and I played Mario U for like five minutes and I was like, yeah, this game is it's okay. And then my system just sat there for a year, pretty much. I was like, what do I do with this? I bought this. I'm excited for it. But why am I not playing it? <laughs> you know, yeah. thankfully, we are getting a Zelda launch title. I know it's a technically a Wii U game as well, but it doesn't matter because I'm getting a better experience of Zelda on the Switch. And... You know, I get that combo. It's like a brand new shiny system. It's like Christmas plus a brand new Zelda game. That never happened. So there was no way I couldn't. And it's a brand new Zelda game that you can take with you anywhere you want. That is crazy. I I don't think that's really sunk in yet. I can't imagine myself, you know, like, oh, I'm going to go visit my family this weekend. Oh, I don't have to stop playing Zelda. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Well, I mean, if you're driving, you might have to. No, (laughs) not really. No. (laughs) I'm gonna get that car. I'm gonna get that car mount and mount it in front of my face on the driver's side, <laughs> and just bad. have the Joy Cons in each of your controllers while you drive and play. See? Oh, actually, you could, since the Joy Cons can separate, you could put the left Joy Con on the left side of the steering wheel and the yeah. right Joy Con on the right. <laughs> right. Side of the That's what I'm wheel. saying. You could just yeah. Over, you just never have Mario to stop. Kart. I think we just invented a new peripheral. Let's sell it for 80 bucks. It'll cause so many accidents. <laughs> you thought Pokemon Go was bad. Just wait till you see this. So, overall, I don't think Nintendo is doomed. Okay. Why not? Are you serious? <laughs> they are so doomed. They are so doomed. They don't have, like, millions and millions and millions of dollars. <laughs> we shall see how launch goes. I am very much hyped. As I explained whenever I said I still would have pre-ordered the system without a Zelda game. 
I would have very much, you know, must missed the Zelda game, but yeah, you know, I would have did it. Nintendo so could how put you guys for lunch. I mean lunch. Ryan, <laughs> Ryan, Nintendo could put a turd in a box and you would buy it. <laughs> <laughs> well, eventually Mario would come out, so yeah, you. <laughs> yeah, how hyped are you guys for lunch? Uh, I'm really hyped. I have not been this. Ex- I, I mean, I can honestly say I was not this excited for the Wii U. Definitely not. Even though the Wii U had more launch games, technically, I just didn't care about it as much. Like, this system looks sleek, super uh, awesome. Uh, I can't even talk <laughs> <laughs> or, form, or form a complete sentence. No, but seriously, though, like, it's just freaking Zelda. Like, yeah. I, I, will, I will honestly admit that I got a little uh, misty-eyed during that Zelda trailer. I'm like, I'm going to be playing this in less than two months. Yeah. That's freaking awesome. Yeah, never expected that it, launch date. It, yeah, I was gonna, I was about to say that was that was a pretty awesome moment when they announced that it was coming out March third. I don't think anyone expected it that early during oh, March. No. So yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, I'm really hyped. Also, mainly, you know, for Zelda, and on top of that, this new system does not have the word "we" in the title, which is still <laughs> such a relief to me. I, I didn't yeah. have any. I didn't really have any fears of that happening again. But you man, never know. It's, it's yeah. You never know with Nintendo. So right. yeah. so yeah. I'm really excited. I can't wait for Zelda. Snipper Clips looks fun. I'll probably buy Bomberman, even though I can't believe it's fifty bucks. And yeah, and Splatoon two. I'm hyped for. And Mario Odyssey and Fire Emblem Warriors and Fire Emblem on the Switch. <laughs> Bionicles and, 2? Uh, Bionicles 2. <laughs> and Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Oh, right? nine? <laughs> I thought two? you were joking. You said Bionicles. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yes, yeah, Bionicles. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. No, Xenoblade Chronicles. I mean, that game's still probably another three years away. I, I don't yeah. believe that game's coming out this oh, year, no way, honestly. No way. Uh, it, no. it looked like it wasn't even in alpha yet, and it looked like it was running at 10 frames per second. So... <laughs> yeah, they need to. Uh, I really wish that they would not have said it was coming out this year because I think they know it's not. So, but no, I'm excited for that game too. I just, it's so weird. It, it hasn't sunk in that that game is actually real because I still feel like it's going to be like another five years till it comes out. So, yeah. I think that's why I'm not super excited for it. It's because I think it's not coming out for a while so but yeah and and hopefully e3 is good so i'm just excited for the switch because you know like like will was saying earlier just the potential of the games that we could get like man if we can get a metroid on this thing oh just please metroid f-zero luigi's mansion yeah oh Oh. yes luigi's mansion moligis luigi's (laughs) mansion a a new mario kart uh smash brothers for port which, you know, maybe we could see that this holiday. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things to be excited about. So yes, yep, I'm hyped. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. So yeah, anyways, uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, be sure to let us know what you are excited for for the Switch. And let us know how many accessories you're going to buy on launch day. Even if you're not getting the console <laughs> on launch day, maybe you should go out and get some accessories. <laughs> so. And let us know everything we said that offended you and why you are now triggered. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Be sure to let us know what we said that we are wrong about. So, yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs> thanks for watching. <laughs> we'll get some barbecue tonight for dinner. <laughs> no, seriously, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, we are going to continue to do these things pretty often, so hopefully you guys look forward to more. And... Yeah, so bye. <laughs> bye. Bye-bye.